Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura has caught the attention of the chess world following his actions at the USA vs India chess match in Arlington, Texas. After leading 4-0 in the match, Hikaru faces off against world champion Gukesh in a 1 plus 1 bullet match to decide the winner of this individual matchup. Hikaru wins the game pretty convincingly, and then he throws Gukesh's king into the crowd. If you know anything about chess or have followed professional chess events, you know this has never been seen before and it's very abnormal. Normally when you go to a chess event, this is about the handshake that you'd see. While there is important context to this, like the fact that the players were actually encouraged to be theatrical, let's not forget who's really to blame here. Meet the sympathetic nervous system, the key player in managing fight or flight situations. The sympathetic nervous system is your body's built-in alarm system. It's the reason your heart races before a big match, or why your palms are sweating after you've blundered a queen in like three moves. It's part of the autonomic nervous system, the part of your body that regulates vital functions without conscious thought. The primary function of the sympathetic nervous system is to prepare the body for physical activity. Let's look at this image and you tell me what you notice. His heart rate is at 171, a long shot from the normal resting heart rate of about 60 to 100 BPM. The interesting thing is that chess is a sport played with little to no physical activity, but the intensity and mental aspect still produce considerable physiological changes. The most Hikaru is doing here is basically moving a piece and hitting a clock. So why is it that the heart beats so fast at this point? The answer is adrenaline, or otherwise known as epinephrine. This neurotransmitter is the final product in a chain of nerves that target the adrenal medulla, basically the inside of the adrenal glands. This signal comes from the amygdala, a part of the brain responsible for the threat detection and fear. In Hikaru's case, the pressure and stakes of the chess match probably set off his amygdala and started the cascade. It then sends a signal to the hypothalamus, the relay center of the brain, that connects nervous system innervation with the rest of the body. The signal then travels along the spinal tract to the adrenal medulla to release epinephrine into the blood. Notably, the increased heart rate leads to faster circulation and more delivery of oxygen to tissues. It does this by binding to beta-adrenergic receptors on the heart, specifically beta-1 receptors, which activate a G-protein signaling cascade. The cascade then increases level of cyclic AMP, basically a secondary messenger within the cell that facilitates communication between the inside and the outside of the cell. Calcium channels will then open within the muscle cells of the heart and lead to an increase in the pumping rate of the heart. Epinephrine binds to other areas of the body, leading to changes that may help in stressful situations where the major difference lies in the type of receptor that epinephrine binds to. The pupils, for example, will dilate, Breathe the bronchioles air. of the lungs will dilate, You'll leading to more advanced. influx of oxygen, and the digestive system is actually deprioritized, so diversion of energy can be led somewhere else. Among other things, of course. The feeling of this is actually known as getting butterflies in the stomach. I literally don't care. Now here's a twist. Even though activation of the sympathetic nervous system leads to stress-induced physiological changes, a specific amount of stress might actually help improve performance, especially in high cognition sports like chess. Adrenaline and its close partner norepinephrine act directly on the brain to heighten alertness and improve reaction speed. These chemicals increase blood flow to critical regions like the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for decision making, and the parietal lobe, which handles spatial reasoning, both which are vital in chess. Studies have actually shown that time pressure is actually one of the biggest stress inducers for chess players and often leads to blunders regardless of your skill level. In fact, it was actually shown that relative blunder rates for higher rated players were higher than lower rated ones, likely because at a low elo you've blundered checkmate in two moves already. In Hikaru's case, his decades of experience and near automatic pattern recognition likely help him stay in the zone, even with his heart rate soaring. This is known as Yerkes Dodson Law, which describes an optimal level of arousal for peak performance. It's the case that a moderate amount of arousal is important for optimal performance, and super GMs like Hikaru have gotten used to a high stakes environment to the point where it actually feels like moderate levels of stress. In other words, he literally, literally does not care. care. After the adrenaline spike and 171 peak heart rate, 
Hikaru's system has to come back to what we call homeostasis, the internal condition we'd consider normal. To counteract the effects of adrenaline, the sympathetic nervous system's brother comes out, the parasympathetic nervous system. In short, this constitutes the second half of the autonomic nervous system and helps to calm us down. While the structure differs slightly, the chain of innervation is quite similar. Rather than epinephrine release, the main thing that will change is that the parasympathetic nervous system will release acetylcholine, an inhibitory neurotransmitter that prevents the synthesis of an action potential. This molecule binds to muscarinic rather than adrenergic receptors, as you would have seen in the sympathetic system. Parasympathetic activation slows Hikaru's heart rate down, constricts his pupils back to normal, and redirects blood flow from the muscles back to the digestive system. Cortisol levels will also begin to decline, and the body switches from fight or flight to rest and digest mode. It basically allows Hikaru to re reset himself and prepare to interact with people who haven't seen the full context of why he threw the king into the crowd. Good luck with that one, buddy. The rebound isn't just physical either, it's cognitive. Have you ever blundered made in one and your opponent just doesn't play it and completely misses it? Emotions run high in the moment, and you have to recollect yourself once you see that the game isn't over. This, like many other systems in the body, is trainable, and top competitors like Ikaru have highly adapted nervous systems that enable them to c come down from the heightened state of arousal much more easily. The reaction to Hikaru's actions have been numerous and has sparked debate among online forums. Regardless of whatever side you're on, the collective reaction to this demonstrates and highlights one fascinating concept, mirror neurons. These bad boys form a network system within the premotor cortex, an area of the brain responsible for movement, and activate when seeing others doing a specific action. It's the reason your stomach drops when you see someone fall really badly, or why you felt a certain way when you saw the clip of Hikaru throwing that king into the crowd. Without context, it seems crazy disrespectful, and our mirror neurons make us feel this way, modulating our feelings of empathy and connection to others. But in competitive settings, it can also create emotional contagion. One player's surge of adrenaline and dominance can ripple across the audience, triggering mirror sympathetic activation in everyone watching. Thank you. <laughs> this shared physiological experience is why these viral moments stick with you, not just because of shock value, but because they engage primal systems of observation, imitation, and emotion. The same neurobiology that makes Hikaru capable of channeling calm under stress also makes us capable of feeling something in those high shock environments. So maybe this wasn't just about chess etiquette or drama, Maybe it was a glimpse at how far biology will go to win, to adapt, and to perform under pressure. Whether you call it instinct, dominance, or just Hikaru being Hikaru, the science behind it remains fascinating. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I have so many more ideas locked and loaded in the chamber, and I would love to know your feedback on this kind of format on the videos. Let me know what can be improved, what's already working, anything you can think of really. I truly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.